Excuse me. Excuse me. Sit down. You're out of you're out of line and an embarrassment. Sit down. Don't play this. Shooting is right now, and you are doing nothing. No. He needs to get his ass out of here. This isn't the place to talk to so. This is totally predictable. Sir, you're out of line. Sir, you are out of line. Sir, you are out of line. Please leave this auditorium. I can't believe you're a sick son of a bitch that would come to a deal like this to make a political issue. First Amendment, freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, welcome to that. Sir, you're out of line. Sir, you're out of line. Please leave this auditorium. It's on assholes like you. Why don't you get out of here? Freedom of speech, the First Amendment of the Constitution. What happened to that? What happened to the First Amendment of the Constitution? Freedom of speech. That was Texas gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke confronting Governor Greg Abbott of Texas at a press event about the mass shooting that he enabled in his state. He did. The blood is on his hands. And I absolutely commend Beto O'Rourke for doing this. Now, if you didn't catch what he was saying, here's part of the transcript here. You are doing nothing, O'Rourke said, only feet away from Abbott. You said this was not predictable. This was totally predictable. And you choose not to do anything. And he also told Abbott... This is on you. And he's absolutely correct about that. He is absolutely unquestionably correct. The blood is on the hands of every single Republican lawmaker who enables these psychopaths, who has no gun regulations that allow people to just walk into a store and purchase a firearm, no gun safety required, no background checks. This is on them. And I applaud Beto O'Rourke because what he's doing is really important. Is it political theater? Sure. But is it necessary? Yes, because in a state of uh, politics where you have Democrats not doing anything, not even doing political theater, I think that efforts like this really should be lifted up and appreciated more, even if I have my disagreements with Beto O'Rourke. Now, you know, the Democratic Party has proven that they are absolutely useless. You have some Democrats in the House like Pelosi, Hoyer and Clyburn who are campaigning for the Republican Party effectively. So they've endorsed Henry Cuellar over a progressive woman. And Henry Cuellar is not just anti-choice, but he got an A rating from the NRA and Democrats are sending out robocalls for him. So this individual is, for all intents and purposes, a Republican, but he has a D in front of his name, so Democratic Party leadership is helping him over the progressive who actually wants to take action. So you have some Democrats in bed with the enemy. You have other Democrats who are just like, well, I don't know what to tell you. It's sad. I wish that we could do something. Like, this is literally the sentiment. As Jake Sherman of NBC News reports, Schumer signals no gun bill imminent. Americans can make a choice, Schumer says. Americans can cast their vote in November based on how people stand on guns. Schumer says Republicans can work with Democrats now to craft a bill. He's skeptical, unlikely, burnt in the past. Now, Joe Manchin called for common sense gun reform, and then he also came out against common sense gun reform simultaneously by rejecting the filibuster reform needed to pass common sense gun reform. President Biden said, as a nation, we must ask, when in God's name will we stand up to the gun lobby? When in God's name will we do what needs to be done? I'm sick and tired of it. We have to act. You are the fucking president of the United States. You have to act. It's on you. We voted you in office. Now you act. Sign some executive orders. The Supreme Court will likely strike them down, but at least we have a year or two of protection until that happens. Actually call on Congress to take action. Name the bills. Name the people in your party who refuse to do filibuster reform. Joe Biden won't do that because he himself isn't really sure if he wants to do filibuster reform. This is what he said when we learned about the draft leak opinion regarding Roe v. Wade, that he wasn't necessarily sure if he wants to make that determination to get rid of Roe now. So even if it were possible, Joe Biden might not necessarily want to do that. So this is the party who is sitting idly by and letting Republicans destroy our civilization, destroy society. So I absolutely applaud Beto O'Rourke for standing up to these Republicans who allowed our elementary schools to be turned into fucking war zones. Because even if he's just acting, at least that's something. But nowadays, we don't get jack fucking shit.
We get nothing. We don't get political theater, no tough talk. I remember the good old days when I would complain about incrementalism, but now we can't even get fucking incrementalist policy. So we get nothing. So if there's any Democrat out there who's just showing a little bit of a sign that they want to fight, a little bit of courage, then that needs to be applauded. Even if I disagree with them, even if I think he's wrong on healthcare and other issues and he's too corporatist for me, I think that needs to be applauded. But as disappointing as Democrats are, I mean, at least you've got to hand it to him for living in reality because um, David Neer shared this photo on Twitter of Republicans. This is their collective response. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. It seems like the thoughts and prayers aren't working. I mean, I don't know if you're praying to the wrong God, but whatever the fuck this is, is not acceptable. And if you think that's an abomination, which it is, it's still somehow better than the other responses that Republicans are giving where they're not even offering kind words. They're just like, yeah, sorry, this is the way it is. Lauren Boebert tweeted, you cannot legislate away evil. So not even offering thoughts and prayers, just fucking deal with it. This is from a Congresswoman. Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeted, our nation needs to take a serious look at the state of mental health today. Sometimes meds can be the problem. America is failing our youngest generations from decades of rejecting good moral values and teachings. We don't need more gun control. We need to return to God. So if you want to stop crazy people from getting these guns that they use to slaughter children, then you have to subscribe to my religion. In fact, I have to impose not just my religion, but my theocratic political worldview on all of you. Otherwise, the kids are going to keep dying. So what is it going to be? Theocracy or dead children? This is what we get from elected lawmakers. And then, of course, you have Republicans who don't say as stupid things as that, but they still blame everything but guns. Our, our prayers and our thoughts are with the families there. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's just a unbelievable evil. And I just, I don't know how someone could actually do something like this. I think, you know, there's going to be all kinds of discussions coming up, unfortunately, you know, in, in the media regarding uh, Second Amendment and regarding uh, the, the, the other issues in, uh, uh, around guns in, in this country. But I think we really need to ask the question, is how could something like this happen? How could somebody do something so evil? I mean, what kind of person, what kind of animal can do this? And I I think, you know, we. I, I grew up in a small town in West Texas, uh, not too much, uh, not not too much smaller than the, than Uvalde, and I, I could never imagine something like this happening when I grew up. But when I grew up, things were different. You know, there was a focus on family and community and church, and I think that you know we, we knew each other. And and, I, and I'm not saying that the people in Uvalde don't know each other, but I think that that that's been that's been robbed from us. Our our culture has changed over the last you know 30 or 40 years, and and and, and the, there's been an attack on those on, on those things in particular. And I just think that. Kids are exposed to all kinds of horrible stuff nowadays, too. I look back and I think about the, you know, the horrible stuff that they hear when they listen to rap music, the video games that they watch from a really early age with all of this horrible violence and stuff. And I just think that, you know, and they have this access to the Internet on a regular basis, which is, you know, it's just not good for kids, I don't think. And so I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's rap music, maybe it's video games, but it's definitely not guns. Even though we literally have more guns than people in this country, it's not guns. Let's not talk about guns. Let's just pretend as if it's other issues. Okay, what other issues? Mental health? Let's pass a mental health bill. Republicans have blocked every single attempt to expand not just access to health care, but mental health care as well. So do you actually think it's mental health? Of course not. They're just trying to obfuscate from the reality of the situation. And the reality is that more guns equals more gun deaths. Correlation does equal causation. This has been demonstrated and proven. And there's a reason why we're the one developed country throughout the world where this fucking happens on a weekly basis. Other countries who had mass shootings like the UK, Australia, they took action and then they stopped mass shootings. But all of this happening, every single mass shooting that we see, this is a policy choice. This is something that our lawmakers are allowing to happen. But let's go to Ted Cruz. Maybe he has a more uh, sensible response to this. Spoiler alert, he doesn't, but let's listen. We know from past experience that the most effective tool for keeping kids safe uh, is armed law enforcement on the campus. You know, inevitably, when there's a murder of this kind, uh, you see politicians try to, try to politicize it. Uh, you see Democrats and a lot of folks in the media whose immediate solution is to try to restrict uh, the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens. That doesn't work. So armed guards and no gun restrictions. Understand how preposterous this is. In response to gun violence due to so many people having guns, they quite literally are saying, more guns, that's the answer. Except, you know, all of these good guys with guns in this situation, um, 
oftentimes doesn't really work out. In this case, it didn't really work out. The good guys with guns didn't stop the bad guy with a gun. Sergeant Eric Estrada of the Texas Department of Public Safety tells Anderson Cooper the shooter crashed his car near the school, got out with a gun and wearing body armor, was engaged by law enforcement but made his way into the school anyway and went classroom to classroom shooting. So that's not it either. So what is the solution? God, I wish I could figure it out. Other countries have, but I mean, I, I, I don't know. What's the fucking solution, folks? I think it's evident what the solution is. We just don't want to implement said solution. A ban on assault weapons, a ban on high capacity magazines, universal background checks, mandated gun safety courses before you're allowed to purchase a gun, a gun buyback program so we don't have so many guns in circulation in this country. Just doing that might help a little. It helped in Australia, right? We can just copy what they did, but no, nope, nothing will happen. The Republican Party at this point is an organized death cult, and they have literally decided for all of us that gun ownership, unlimited gun ownership, is more important than the lives of your children. That's what they decided for all of us. And we have the Democratic Party who's just sitting there saying, okay, I guess this is bad, but this is what we have to live with. Vote harder next time, folks. What a horrible society that we live in. Politicians have chosen that we are going to live in this state of barbarity in perpetuity. Politicians have chosen that people in this country are going to continue to die because they don't have basic health care. Politicians in this country have decided for all of us that we're not going to have a habitable planet because they don't want to offend their donors in the fossil fuel industry. So if they've already decided our fate for us and there's nothing that we can do to change it, at a minimum, we have to make them uncomfortable and confront these politicians in the same way that Beto O'Rourke did. We have to disrupt their events. Don't let their propaganda penetrate into normie discourse. If you see a member of your family stating their intent to vote for a Republican, treat that as them admitting that they're going to commit an act of violence and direct because that is what the situation has devolved into in this country. If there are people who are supporting this organized death cult, then you have to intervene and stop them, at least try to stop them, because that's where we're at. You have the Republican Party blocking any and all legislation that would do something, maybe put a dent in these mass shootings. And then you have Democrats who are sitting on their asses doing nothing because they're too afraid to confront these Republicans in the way that Beto O'Rourke did. So look, I, I applaud Beto for doing this. I applaud him for doing this because... Honestly, this is the bare minimum that you can do. Just have a little bit of courage to confront these ghouls who created this climate in the first place.